Hi there. Last week I did a video on empath self-care and I focused on getting out in nature. Actually a couple of weeks before that I spoke about making chai or making tea which is one of the things I do when I feel I, little, I need a little bit of self-care. So today I wanted to give you a few more empath self-care tips because of the response I've been getting from those videos where people have been saying that, oh, this is so helpful, please give us more tips, give us more tips. So today I thought I'd give you a few more. And for me, a big one, and this is a really big one, is turn off all external input. This one is so important. Um, and so what do I mean by turn off all external input? If you can take a break, an information fast or a, a technology break for one day a week, you know, if you can't make it one day a week, at least try one day a month. It is so helpful, especially if you are an empath. It is so good for you because empaths have a tendency to really take information on into their bodies. So if you are watching the news all day every day or you're on social media and people are talking about stuff that's happening out in the world because you know they're talking about things that are happening all over the world and and news today travels faster than the speed of sound or light um, and as an empath you'll be taking that on not just in your physical body but in your energy field and you need a break from that to clear to clear yourself and to expand your own energy field your own life force energy because the thing about an empath is that um, is that you're like a sponge if you relate to being an empath it means that you relate to the fact that you can be a sponge if you're unaware that you do this you have a tendency to allow outside events to dictate your moods outside events either make you feel sad and drained or happy and joyful whereas we need to take that power back <laughs> we need to take that power back and we need to be able to do it for ourselves we need to be able to control whether we feel happy or joyful ourselves and every now and then we, you know, you won't feel happy and joyful all the time, 24 seven. But what you want to do is that when you're not feeling joyful, it's because it's your stuff, not because of everybody else's stuff. And this is really important. Very often people will say to me, but you know, if I don't tune in to what's happening with everyone else, that makes me feel guilty. Here's the problem though. If you tune in to everything that gets you down, and then you're weighed down, then what good are you to the people around you? Because you bring yourself wherever you go. You don't wanna bring a drained self wherever you go. You want to bring an uplifted self, a self that has expanded energy. Because what happens is when you, um, when you feed your life force energy with things that make you joyful and happy, it makes it expands your energy it feeds your energy if you're always around things that make you feel sad and depressed or angry um, or or unhappy it depletes your energy when your energy is depleted what happens is that you become more susceptible and more vulnerable to absorbing the energies around you when your energy is expanded not only are you not as susceptible to absorb the energies around you but also what happens is when your energy is expanded it expands with with joy that's how to expand it you expand it with joy and happiness and things that uplift you when your energy is expanded other people feel your energy and so you then uplift other people. You entrain the people around you without having to say or do anything. So when someone says that, oh, you're being selfish by going and taking care of yourself and just doing things that make you happy when there's so many problems in the world, people still say that to me. People, when they see me having fun or finding my joy, they're like, 
oh gosh, you're only thinking of yourself and your message is always about taking care of yourself. How can you take care of yourself and not feel guilty about everything that's happening in the world? This is the thing that in this world, the way energy works is that when you take care of yourself and your energy is expanded, you entrain the people around you, you expand the energy of the people around you just by them being in your energy space. If your energy is the strongest energy in the area, other people will entrain to you. If your energy is weak, you will entrain to other people, but you have to hope that the people around you have joyful energy, because if they don't, you're going to entrain with whatever's closest to you, depressed energy, angry energy, whatever's closest, and you don't want to do that. That's why it's important for you to, to expand your energy. And one of the ways I do that is by turning off at least once a week, everything that is not uplifting and joyful. And that means not listening to the news, even if it means not listening or turning into social media. If you want, you can at least control it and only listen to people's messages people who you know uplift you, certain people that you may follow who you know actually uplift and help you. At least you can do that. But I tend to actually not watch the news more than once a week. I just watch it once a week just to get my information of what I need as to what's happening in the world so I know how to respond to the world. But that's it. I don't watch, and I actually do know people who watch it 24 seven and I don't know how they can do that. Okay, so that is one of the most, um, I think, powerful ways to actually um, nurture your, yourself. And that is one of the best self-care things that you can do as an empath, is to give yourself an information fast. Another thing that I do is um, I love cooking. I just love cooking, and for me, just like making chai, cooking is a big thing it's a palava it's a, i love using ingredients of all colors and one day i'll do a video of me cooking i've done some in the past you can check they're old they're like from about a year ago but i'll do another one again soon another thing that i love to do is i love listening to music and i love I, and i allow myself to get into a meditative state but music i select certain kinds of music um, certain meditative mu um, musicians. Like I love um, the music of, for example, um, Paul Luftenegger or Barry Goldstein. And um, there is there are some other musicians, like there's one called Deuter or Deuter, D-E-U-T-E-R, you spell it that way. There's another one, a gentleman by the name of um, Avishai Barnaton. These are different musicians that I find create really, really beautiful music, but they're not the only ones. There are a lot. I love Krishna Das. His voice can put me in, in a trance. Um, I, uh, there's, I have so much music and I love music because it does actually change my energy state. It changes my frame of mind um, and it clears my energy and it expands my energy. Another thing that actually helps me a lot is um, movement. Movement can really, really help clear your energy. Um, so you have to make time for these things and the movement can be anything like whether it's yoga or walking or um, swimming or any, any kind of movement that, that um, makes you feel good, makes you feel good about yourself. I love to do stretching and walking and uh, I like walking on the beach and things like that. I do a lot of stretching when I wake up in the morning, I try and stretch a lot. So um, movement does clear your energy. And um, when you do these things, you end up recharging your batteries, which expands your life force energy, which expands your aura, all of which helps you to become more healthy. And um, last week when I did a video, I had a question, somebody asked, uh, someone posted the question, how do you clear yourself when you've taken someone else's energy? So the first thing is to actually be aware that you have a tendency to do that. 
So your awareness already helps you tremendously. The second thing I would do is any of those things, like I would go for a walk in nature, I would do, get into movement, I would listen to music. Um, you can meditate and you can connect with your higher self. You know, when you do these things that expand your energy, what happens is you get more insights from your higher self. You get more messages, you get more downloads, you get more intuitive hits. Because when you are retracted, when your energy is small, when you're living from a place of fear and fight or flight or survival, and when you're listening to all the fear-based messages coming at you from the outer world, it's very hard for your intuition to actually come through. You actually close yourself down from listening to the messages from your higher self. But when you allow yourself to expand your aura and raise your energy and allow yourself to do things, these self-care things that I mentioned, what happens is that it opens you up to receiving more messages. That's why it's so important to do that, especially if you're an empath. Another question that somebody had is, um, is where do I get my crystals from? I loved that question. Someone asked me about that. I love crystals. For me, crystals raise my energy. Um, and I feel that I'm, I've got a connection with earth when I wear crystals. It earths me because I allow my mind and my spiritual self to soar. I feel like I'm always connected to the divine, but I need help in being connected to the earth. And so crystals help to earth me. Nature helps to earth me. Um, so where do I get my crystals from? Today I'm wearing all these, um, these colors to match my top. Um, I get them from all, all over during my travels. Um, this is actually a Labradorite. The crystals I was wearing last week in the video that I was doing last week, I know one of them I got from Quartzsite, at least, from which is in Arizona, which is on the border, the California-Arizona border. There's actually a store at the border, the California-Arizona border, in an area called Quartzsite, uh, and there's a store called Gem World. They have some amazing pieces there. But also once a year at Quartzsite, there's a gem fair, which is amazing, beautiful, and huge. Another place I go to is the Santa Barbara gem fair, which is where I got these. Um, I do get also get my jewelry from some, when we used to do events, when we used to travel at that, in the times when we would travel, and there were um, events I would do, multi-speaker events like Celebrate Your Life or Hay House events, there would always be concession stands and there would be people selling jewelry. Um, one of the jewelry operators, his name is Digby, haven't seen him in ages because we don't do the, those, um, those shows anymore but I would buy jewelry from him. So really I get them from all over the place. If you're in the LA area, another place I get a lot of my jewelry is a store called Soothe Your Soul. Um, so that's a fabulous store with lots of great jewelry. Uh, so yeah, just all over the place. So thank you for that question. And, um, and, and, and keep practicing all the self-care stuff and don't feel guilty because guilt is another emotion that's just going to uh, drain you and it's going to bring your energy down. And remember when your energy is down, you're not uplifting other people. You need to be a light, uplift your, yourself to uplift other people. Thanks for tuning in and um, you know, check out my book, Sensitive is the New Strong. It's also now, now out in audio and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye.